good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, we are starting with a second session of the day and it gives me great pleasure uh, to for me to introduce our guest of honor and speaker dr haseen taj she is a professor chairperson and dean faculty of education at the university of bangalore she has about 38 years of teaching and research experience at the post graduate level She was a university gold medalist in a MED course and a recipient of a series of awards to name a few the state award in 1984 the national award 96 the professional involvement award in 98 best award teacher again in 98 behavioral scientist award in 2001 women empowerment year award in 2001 education development and peace award 2001 again National level special award 2003, Prabha Bhargava Samman in 2009, Baba Saheb Dr Ambedkar National Fellowship Award 2009, and senior and best senior educationist award in 2015, best cognitive psychologist award in 2018 for her excellence in research. She has also been chosen as the member of Professional Women's Advisory Board. for her distinguished standing by ABI USA she has done quite a few book reviews and has published about 15 books and 250 research and thematic articles both in national and international journals she has guided several MED MPhil and PhD students and has developed about developed and standardized about 50 research tools and has published 17 out of them She has completed six major research projects funded by national agencies like UGC, UICSSR, MHRD, and the state government. She has attended several national, international seminars and conferences as resource person and presented more than about three hundred papers, apart from invited lectures, lead papers, and keynote addresses. She is a member of the Academic Council and Syndicate member, Bangalore University. She has served in many committees as chairperson and member on state and central government assignments. She is a member of the NAC peer team, inspecting authority of the MAEF, Ministry of Minority Government of India (UGC), expert member for monitoring institutions of excellence, member of curriculum committee (NCTE), member of task force on teacher education, knowledge commission, government of Karnataka. and chairperson for committee for preparing report on ITEP higher education council and government of karnataka etc she has also served as an expert member of board of appointments of several universities in the country apart from being a consultant to several national and state level projects she is also a member of several academic boards bodies besides holding honorary positions in ngos and office bearer of 27 academic and professional organizations she is also on the editorial board of several journals and has chaired several sessions in national international level seminars conferences she is a trained hrd facilitator bangalore university ladies and gentlemen please join me in welcoming dr haseen taj thank you thank you so much Uh, nice of you that you made a uh, introduction of me. Uh, uh, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so at the outset, I would like to uh, thank the Surendra North College of uh, Education under Calcutta University and uh, my another good friend, uh, Professor Rajit Mandal, who introduced me to Dr. Mom Mitra and all of you. for uh, uh, giving me an opportunity to just uh, be a part of this uh, program so i am very very happy the esteemed uh, uh, principal the head of the department and all the learned uh, staff members guest invitees and also the learned participant uh, friends uh, it's uh, very nice to know that uh, the college of education like though there is a lot of of course uh, in spite of the fact that there is a lockdown and all that and i am very happy uh, that the teachers and the teacher education institutions are very very active if not online 
we have become more active off uh, that is online like by organizing so many programs uh, webinars and virtually sharing the space and that is a nice thing and i'm also happy that you have taken up a very very opt uh, topic for uh, one of these uh, uh, webinars that you have organized at a national level that is the nep 2020 and i i could see all the uh, like in your uh, brochure and the invitation that almost all the aspects of this nep is been uh, covered uh, by various uh, uh, resource persons so my uh, topic of presentation would be uh, teacher education as reflected in 2020 I would like to make my presentation uh, just in uh, three parts, though there is no, I have put anywhere uh, like first part, second part, three, uh, third part, but my uh, presentation would be focusing on uh, the introductory part would be on teacher and teacher education. And the next part, I would like to focus on integrated IT, uh, that is integrated teacher education program, its implications. And the final part, I would also like to bring it to the notice and, uh, of, and the information of all the teacher educators here that there are some of the challenges that we need to overcome or we need to face or we need to further get clarification when we are introducing this uh, integrated teacher education program. So this would be my uh, like a concise presentation on the theme of uh, uh, that is teacher education as reflected in uh, 2020. Uh, would I be allowed to make a presentation? Yes, ma'am. You have to share your screen. Okay. Uh, is it visible? Not yet, ma'am. No. You have to share your full screen, ma'am. Okay, okay. Just a minute. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Am I audible? Yes, very much, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, I am happy to be a part of this uh, uh, virtual uh, webinar. As I said, the topic for uh, uh, this uh, session is teacher education as reflected in uh, NEP 2020. And of course, NEP 2020 has uh, uh, definitely uh, sp uh, spoken a lot more uh, things like beyond teacher education and I have seen that the various uh, subtopics under uh, new education policy is also being covered by the college and uh, my focus would be only on this uh, teacher education part. So as an uh, introduction to this as we all know like we are living in a democracy and any democratic society it depends on a thoughtful like preparation of a citizenry. That means we need the citizens who are very thoughtful, who are capable of like maybe participation, like whether it is socially, politically, economically, make a contribution towards the success of a democracy. And for that, if at all, if you want to build such a citizenry, if you want to have a thoughtful citizenry, and that the whole responsibility has to be shouldered by the teachers. When we say that it's the responsibility of the teachers to prepare such a thoughtful citizenry line, then we have to think about how do we prepare such teachers who would foster such thoughtful citizenry. That means the focus is on the preparation of the teachers. The teachers' responsibility is to prepare or to foster thoughtful citizenry with democratic values and skills, and that should become a major problem of teacher education. If at all, if you are talking about a preparation of the teachers, the teachers who are pre-service teachers, like we are talking about the pre-service teachers, how are we going to prepare such teachers who in turn are going to prepare the thoughtful citizenry? And this thoughtful citizenry, who should be equipped with 
the democratic values as well as the skills and which are very much necessary for any thoughtful citizen and that becomes a very very major part of the problem of teacher education if you are to maintain an inclusive society as we all know like one of the major aspects that the in the vision itself that the, the nep has spoken about an inclusive society when we want to have a inclusive society when we want to give an opportunity to all the people across the country that irrespective of caste creed religion region language right like uh, normal or disabled irrespective of like gender irrespective of that that we need to give opportunity and access to all the people to the field of education or to the education institutions if you are thinking of a inclusive society if you are thinking of a inclusive society we need to include all types of children to our schools and these children should become the future thoughtful citizens with all the values and knowledge and the skills which are required to run the democracy successfully so if we want such teachers who should prepare such thoughtful citizenry then how should be the preparation of the teachers and of course we all know like in the present scenario in the 21st century we see that there is a lot more things are happening especially when we talk about the employment so when we can see that there is this employment situation is changing very quickly and also not only this employment landscape is changing quickly but also the global ecosystem now it is becoming very very important and very very critical that the children not only they should learn only the content not only that the knowledge but more importantly they should be able to learn how to learn so it is not that that the no more that we can restrict our children only to the syllabus only to the textbooks or only to the content that is been given we are preparing the children who are global citizens but now that the whatever with the whole world is shrinked into a global village and we need to prepare global citizens with all those skills with all those values which all those competencies which are required to survive in a 21st century it is not sufficient it's not adequate if the children learn what it is there in the textbooks are just it's only restricted to the syllabi but they need to learn how to learn because learning we are talking here it's a life it's a lifelong learning because they are supposed to learn unlearn relearn things throughout the life in order to be adaptable to this global ecosystem so that is what we are talking about in our nep and now education like whatever that our education system is there right from maybe pre primary to the tertiary level we need to move towards less content and more towards learning and about how to think critically and solve problems and how to be creativity creative as well as multidisciplinary how to be innovative how to adapt ourselves how to absorb new materials in a novel and in the changing field so no more in a 21st century that our education should teach only the content so we need to teach less of the content but we should teach the children to learn more of how to think so thinking what we talk about like mega thinking what we talk about mega cognition so they should be able to we should develop such skills where they should be able to think critically where they should be able to solve the problem it is not that through our education we should give the children branded solutions and those branded ready made solutions may work in certain situations and it may not work we should be able to develop critical thinking and ability to solve problems so wherever there is a new novel situation no the new field and they should be able to innovate they should be able to absorb the new material and they should be able to adopt and they should become more creative and the student should become more multidisciplinary so for that it is very very essential that in our education system we should evolve the new pedagogies so it is very very essential that even the nep speaks about like what should be the type of pedagogy right from pre primary to the tertiary level and at least up to the 10 plus so what type of pedagogy should be used so we need to evolve our uh, pedagogy in all our uh, spheres of our uh, 
education system like at different levels and we need to make it more holistic more experiential more integrated more inquiry driven more discovery oriented more learner centered and it should be discussion based flexible and of course that should be enjoyable so like whatever the traditional pedagogy that we are using and the traditional pedagogy where the child is very very passive we are only using a monologue method where the teacher is making a presentation or the teacher is sharing the knowledge with the children and without the active participation of the children and now the nep speaks about the change in the pedagogy and we want the such pedagogy which is experiential where the children should have a first hand experience where they should be involved in experimentation in field studies maybe in the various types of activities right it should be holistic like our nep speaks about not that the content like whatever the child has learned that the assessment is only to be cognitive assessment has to be 360 degrees assessment has to be all round when they talk about holistic report card so what is that holistic report card they say that through this holistic report card that the assessment should be cognitive social emotional affective and psychomotor so when the assessment is holistic only then we will be able to identify certain specific aptitude of the child when we once identify the specific aptitude of the child we will be able to develop those aptitude that a child has inherited or the child has acquired so that should be our uh, pedagogy and it should be integrated and of course we all know that that the nep speaks about there is no uh, demarcation there is no separation of curricular co curricular extra curricular or whatever it is art science music engineering whatever it is so they want a holistic as well as an integrated education to be given apart from that an inquiry driven so developing critical thinking creativity discovery oriented where the children should become the scientists the children should be able to find out why it is not just that our traditional teaching only focuses on what so it is not merely what the children should be taught how and why that is very very essential in our the way that we are using that the type of pedagogy that we evolve that should help the child to develop how and why of something which he is doing and the the whatever the content that we are uh, having whatever the pedagogy that we that we are using there has to be a shift from teacher centered pedagogy to the learner centered pedagogy so the children should become the center of their learning and they should become self confident and self reliant and self dependent and teacher should become only a facilitator the teacher should be a guide the teacher should be a uh, friend a teacher should facilitate whatever the teacher the student is needed and a teacher should answer the questions which are asked by a student whether it is of primary level whether it is of higher level whether it the teacher thinks relevant or irrelevant and that should be the role of the teacher when you are uh, shifting the pedagogy from the teacher center to the learner center and apart from that it should be discussion based so what long back the uh, method which socrates spoke about the dialogue method he said that the teaching learning should occur through a dialogue method so that is through discussion it may be the discussion between the student and teacher the discussion among the peer group the discussion may be with other uh, uh, in, uh, maybe inter school or various ways that it has to be discussion based and it has to be flexible when it is learner centered automatically one of the very very important feature that we find that learner center education is always flexible a child or a student would choose what he wants to learn whatever he has learned already he need not repeat it but what happens in a traditional uh, classroom the teacher would start because there are different types of student some may be not having the fundamentals some may be very advanced some may be very average student but the teacher has to start maybe probably from the introduction maybe from fundamentals which may be a waste of time maybe for the students who are highly advanced who knows something but in a learner centered like uh, learning what happens the you know, whatever the material that is provided to them that would be flexible the child would choose 
how he wants to learn, what he wants to learn, right? Like what exactly is needed for him and whatever the uh, material that is, whether it is audio, video, text, uh, animation, or uh, anything, any applications, anything that we are providing to, to the students, which is learner center, and that should be enjoyable. The child sitting, maybe when he is learning, self-learning, he should enjoy, he should love to learn, he should like to learn, and that should be our pedagogy. And we should need, we should need to move our pedagogy, and that is what it has been spoken in NEP 2020. And here I want to make it a point, it is not that, that the NEP 2020, which has spoken everything which is uh, not known, everything which was not uh, spoken by other uh, national education policies, right from 1968, almost all the policies they have spoken about all these things, almost all the policies they have thought of the learner-centered education, they have thought of an inquiry-driven education, the holistic education, and an enjoyable education that the like, uh, learning should be enjoyable. But now the NEP 2020 is seriously, it wants to implement that there should be a shift in the pedagogy also, and we should focus on all these aspects. Just a minute. Sorry. Now, coming to the National Education Policy of 2020, and we can say uh, this is the first education policy of the 21st century and aims to address the many growing developmental imperatives of our country. And of course, I do, I, I, I definitely said that from 1968, we are talking about when it comes to 21st century skills, when it comes to 21st century competencies required. So the National Education Policy 2020 speaks about many requirements or many required imperatives, especially for the students of our country. In particular, we say that, that the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development adopted by India, along with all United Nations member states in 2015, includes critically the Sustainable Development Goal 4 to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all by 2030. And of course, we all know that the education for all. So one of the United Nations World Conference, so India was also one of the signatory to achieve the 100% literacy and to achieve a inclusive and equitable quality education. And now in the national education policy of 2020, at least by 2030, right? We are, this policy aims at achieving this inclusive as well as double, as well as equitable quality education. So we are, as I already told you, inclusive, irrespective of any barriers to everyone who is a citizen of this country should have a quality education and equitable quality education and that should also promote a lifelong learning opportunities for everyone at least by 2030 and this is the commitment of this new education policy of 2030. Now coming in to the vision of NEP 2020 and like of course all of you know it as teacher educators all of you have read this document to start with, and of course, there are a few uh, important uh, uh, visions which have been listed out, but I uh, like to take up on only this particular vision, which majorly speaks about the whole NEP 2020. So this national education policy envisions an education system rooted in Indian ethos that contributes directly to transforming India, that is Bharat, sustainably into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all, thereby making India a global knowledge superpower. So this is the vision of NEP 2020. So we want our education system to be rooted into Indian ethos and to the Indian culture. And we also want to contribute directly transforming India that is to Bharat. So of course, why we are saying is India is not Bharat? 
right now, whatever the type of education we are following, it is a British system given to us, not completely rooted in the Indian ethos. We want our children, right, to be, uh, uh, to be made aware of the Indian culture, Indian ethos, maybe the Indian cultural heritage, the Indian education system, thereby transforming India into Bharat. And apart from that, we want to have an equitable and a vibrant knowledge society. So the vibrant knowledge society, how is it possible? By providing high quality education to all. That is nothing but a inclusive education and thereby making India a global knowledge superpower. If at all, if we achieve 100% literacy, where the inclusive education ha happen, and that inclusive education, if it is of high quality for each and every child, then naturally, then definitely, India is going to become a knowledge superpower. Now, India, uh, sorry, NEP 2020 prospects for teacher education. When we talk about the teacher education, what are the prospects that the policy speaks about? And they say teacher education is vital in creating a pool of school teachers that will shape the next generation. So it is very important. The, na the national education policy, it recognizes if at all, if you want to shape the next generation, it is very essential, it is very vital that we need to create a pool of teachers, school teachers, and through teacher education. And this teacher preparation is an activity that requires multidisciplinary perspectives and knowledge, formation of dispositions and values, and development of practice under the best mentors. That means we can prepare the best teachers to shape the next generation through the teacher education programs. And these teacher preparation programs should be able to work with a multidisciplinary perspective, not only in the knowledge formation, but also attitude development, that is the disposition, as well as values development. And that is through the development of practice. It is not just merely the theory learning, but it has to be through a practice. So equal importance, more importance has to be given to the practice apart from the knowledge, apart from the content, apart from the learning of pedagogy, the subject knowledge, disciplinary knowledge, practice is very, very important under the best mentors, that is the teacher educators. And also teachers must be grounded in Indian values, languages, knowledge, ethos, and traditions, including tribal traditions, while also being well-versed in the latest advance in education and pedagogy. So we are talking about if at all, if you want to prepare such school teachers could shape the next generation, the teacher education, the responsibility rests with the teacher education programs or maybe with the teacher education institutions so that they develop the teachers who are grounded in Indian values. We need to develop in our pre-service student teachers the required Indian values, the knowledge which is required, the culture, the tradition, ethos, the language, including the tribal traditions. And they should also be well-versed not only in these Indian values, language, ethos, and traditions, but also with the latest advances in education pedagogy. We are talking about latest advances in education pedagogy, maybe the, the updating of the knowledge, the recent knowledge, the scientific knowledge, the know-how of the pedagogy, as well as the know-how in teaching and learning, maybe the, also maybe the use of technology, the integration of technology in teaching and learning. And definitely the teachers have worked as front for uh, learners. I would like to definitely appreciate the teachers. Last time when the uh, first uh, lockdown started, the teachers were highly confused and many teachers had no training, no orientation, and many teachers had no devices with them. With all that, and they were also highly criticized by parents and by, by community. And of course, now they have realized the importance of the teachers with all the difficulties, with all the barriers, the teachers were able to make it up and through online and the teachers have made themselves to some extent well-versed with this online teaching and many applications. They have self-learned and they have done it, taken education to the doorsteps to the, of the children. And the teachers have worked like any other frontline workers during this lockdown. Teachers should also be applauded for having rendered their service by taking education to the doorsteps of the children. So definitely the teachers have also become very much uh, uh, aware of these latest advances 
in education in pedagogy and through the use of technology but still lot more need to be learned in the 21st century for the by the teachers still to see that that they adopt almost all the latest technology which is required to impart education to the children either maybe in a offline mode or online mode or in a blended mode Now, as in spoken in NEP 2020, as we have seen it, that the BA degree will teach a range of knowledge content, pedagogy, and include strong practicum training. As it has been spoken in NEP, that the teacher education program, like whatever the Bachelor of Education degree, so it is that Bachelor of Education degree should focus on teaching a range of knowledge content, maybe the various disciplinary subjects, as well as the pedagogical knowledge which is uh, required, as well as a very strong practicum which is required for the in-service teachers to become the school teachers. And also the curriculum should also include effective techniques in pedagogy and foundational literacy and numeracy, multi-level teaching and evaluation. So teaching children with disabilities, with special interest or talents, use of education and technology and learner center and collaborative learning. And now, this is what the whole crust of the teacher education program should be like in the uh, years to come, like as spoken by NEP 2020. It says that not only content knowledge and pedagogy, the curriculum should also include not only that, the foundational literacy, numeracy, but they should learn multi-level teaching, maybe pre-primary to the tertiary. They should be able to teach, handle children at different levels. And they should be able to do assessment and evaluation, which is 360 degree, not just merely valuing the answer scripts, not merely assessing the students on the scripts, but social, not only cognitive, but social, emotional, social uh, affective and psychomotor. They should learn these assessment and evaluation and they should learn assessment and evaluation, not only doing manually, but also offline. They should learn the various techniques and they should be able to teach children with normally, not only the normal children, but also the children with disabilities, maybe. And now in an inclusive setup, we expect any every institution to see that, that the whatever the curriculum, whatever the pedagogy, whatever the infrastructure that is required and the teaching is required for children with disability, they should be able, able to reach out to them to give access to such type of children in an inclusive institution. And they should be able, teachers should be able to teach children with special interests or talents. Maybe they are gifted children, they should be able to teach such gifted children. And they should also be uh, able to know the know-how and the use of educational technology. And they should also know what is a learner-centered uh, uh, teaching and learning, how should they go about, and they should also learn collaborative learning, not only the collaborative learning among the students, collaborative learning, team teaching, collaborative learning through professional organizations, through professional forums, professional platforms, the teacher should also be able to learn collaboratively. So this is what is very much uh, required uh, in a, uh, as it is spoken in NEP. And of course, we all know uh, that uh, uh, NEP also speaks about, if at all, if you want to strengthen our teacher education uh, programs, if you want to have uh, uh, better teachers, both in terms of uh, content as well as pedagogy, and if at all, if you want to produce outstanding teachers, and such teachers should be selected only through teacher eligibility test. As you all know that they have said, tests should be made uh, uh, mandatory and it should be compulsory right from the teachers who are teaching all the stages whether they are teaching foundational stage whether they are that is uh, five plus three plus three plus four whatever it is whether it is a foundational stage whether it is a preparatory stage or a middle stage or secondary level stage all the uh, pre-service uh, teacher uh, in service uh, pre-service uh, student teachers should be taught to teach at all levels uh, they should be able to teach foundational to senior secondary level and they should all 
be able to handle almost all those aspects which I just spoke about in the previous slide. And everybody, like that, it should be mandatory that everybody should possess, they should pass out this teacher eligibility test. Only then they believe that we are going to have outstanding teachers, both in terms of content, pedagogy, knowledge, and whatever that we want to have. So now, the next very, very important aspect that I have spoken about the teacher and the teacher education program with regard to the career management and progression. So here they say that teachers doing outstanding work must be recognized. They should be promoted. They should be given salary rise and they should be given incentives to those teachers who are doing the best work. So this sort of recognition, promotions, incentives are absent when it comes to teachers. We may find such type of things, maybe in some of the corporates, maybe in some of the other types of uh, uh, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, in the entrepreneuring institutions, but not in the uh, teaching or not in the field of education. But now, when it comes to career management, the NEP speaks about, like, if at all, the, uh, the good teachers, outstanding teachers, to be encouraged to take up the best work or to continue the best work, they should be promoted and their salaries to be raised and they should be given the incentives. And they say that this is going to, this incentive, whatever recognition is there, this is going to bring excellence in the teachers and we are preparing committed teachers through the tenure, through promotions and through salary increase. So by doing that, the NEP believes that, that we are going to bring excellence in the field of education. We are going to prepare committed teachers for that say, like this progression or this career management should be purely merit-based. So the tenure should be merit-based, that is by giving the recognition to the people. And now when we are talking about the improvement, now where the teachers, apart from that, if at all, if you want to in, improve and reach the levels of integrity and credibility required to restore the prestige of the uh, uh, prestige of this teaching profession, as we all know, like uh, India is a country where when we talk about the uh, gurukulas, where the teacher enjoyed the highest stage, the status, even the kings used to come and sit below the feet of a teacher. That was the status that the teachers enjoy, enjoyed in the ancient India or maybe in the ancient period. Over a period of time, because of various reasons and maybe the society, like, of course, compared to the other professions, everybody can be teachers have been looked down upon. And not only that, they also partially responsible the teachers themselves who do not maintain the integrity and credibility of the profession. So if at all, if you want to improve and once again, reach the level of integrity and the credibility, which is required to restore the prestige of the teaching profession. So we are talking about regulatory system should be empowered to take stringent action against any substandard and dysfunctional teacher education institutions that do not meet basic educational criteria after giving one year for remedy of the breaches because there are so many off-campus institutions. I have also been on various committees and I have just seen there are so many teacher education institutions which are working off-campus. A student without even entering, without even having a regular classroom experience, not a practicum, just writes an examination like a distance mode uh, student or uh, maybe a pupil and gets a degree who would not have experience, all these things, and there cannot be, we cannot expect an integrity and a professional prestige on part of such things. So in order to see that such teacher education institutions and such dysfunctional and substandard institutions, they should be done away with, maybe after giving a warning and giving one year's time for remedy of any violations or any breaches. And that is what it is being spoken, like if at all, if you want to prepare good teachers and in our teacher education institutions. Now, not only that, by 2030, uh, only 
uh, educationally sound, multidisciplinary and integrated teacher education program shall be enforced. Of course, you all know that all alone, right, are standalone uh, teacher education institutions are going to be discarded, are going to be closed down. As per the NEP, only multidisciplinary and integrated teacher education programs are going to be enforced from 2030 onwards. And from 2030 onwards, when we speak about multidisciplinary in integrated teacher education programs, multidisciplinary may be that the teacher education programs may become part of the degree pro colleges or maybe post-graduation degree and all such, uh, uh, even maybe even uh, the plus two level and teacher education programs are going to become part of such type of multidisciplinary higher education institutions and maybe by 2030 the teacher education programs which are offering whether it is a two-year BA program or maybe a two-year elementary level teacher education program or whatever it is it is going to be like uh, mandatorily to be converted into a four-year integrated teacher education program and that is going to become a minimum degree qualification for school teachers whether the teacher is teaching at a foundational stage or the teacher is teaching at a secondary higher or senior secondary stage. That is the reason like all these BA programs or teacher education institutions need to teach all the uh, pre-service uh, student teachers to handle all levels of education, whether foundational, preparatory, middle or secondary or senior secondary, whatever it is, they should be able to handle because tech is common for all and four-year integrated teacher education program is going to be common for all with a dual major holistic bachelor's degree in education that may be a teacher may hold a language, history, music, science, uh, whatever it is, apart from the pedagogy, they will also have a disciplinary degree along with them. So that is what is being spoken in the teacher education uh, uh, NEPT. And apart from that, beyond the teaching of cutting edge pedagogy, teacher education will include grounding in sociology, history, science, psychology, early childhood. So that is what it is being spoken, knowledge of India, values, ethos, art, traditions, and more. So these integrated teacher education programs should concentrate apart from teaching pedagogy, and it should be able to teach all these disciplinary subjects, educational subjects, as well as the literacy, numeracy, knowledge about India, values, ethos, art, traditions, as well as the more. And the higher education institutions offering the four-year integrated B8 may also run a two-year B8 for students who have already received a bachelor's degree in a specialized subject. And they have given the option for those multidisciplinary higher education institutions where teacher education program is going to become a part of it. And if at all, if they are running a four-year integrated teacher education program, they should also be given an option. They should also be given a uh, access to run teacher education program for all those students who have already received an integrated bachelor's degree or any bachelor's degree in a specialized subject. And they have also spoken about a one-year BA program to be offered for candidates who have received a four-year undergraduate degree in a specialized subject. So maybe for a three years bachelor's degree, there may be a two-year BA program. And students who have already undergraduates, maybe in a uh, uh, multidisciplinary higher education institution, which is an integrated degree in a specialized subject, they should also be able to receive one year B8. And it is also spoken in order to attract the best and outstanding students to this teaching profession, to this four year integrated teacher education program that merit scholarship should be given or meritorious students should be given the scholarship so that we, uh, we attract the best of the best students to this teacher education programs. And in order to maintain uniform standards for teacher education, the admissions to pre-service teacher preparation program shall be through suitable subject and aptitude test. So the, this needs to be conducted by national testing agency. So they should follow certain standi, uh, standards, keeping in view the linguistic and cultural diversity of the country. The national testing agency should conduct the aptitude test and also the uh, subject knowledge in order to give admission to the teacher education program so that the uniform standards of teacher education is maintained.
So by the end of 2021, a new and comprehensive national curriculum framework for teacher education is going to be formulated by the NCTE. And of course, we all know that there are a lot of discussions, which is already now the portal was open and which they are inviting the suggestions from the various uh, stakeholders and from the various uh, uh, policy makers, maybe parents, teachers, students, and everybody. And that is made available, that uh, should be made available in all regional languages so that, that the NCT is to prepare the framework for teacher education 2021. As you all know, due to the lockdown that last year and all this, they could not complete and they could not uh, get adequate responses from the stakeholders. So the implementation or the preparation of this framework for teacher education 2021 is being postponed by another one more year. You know it. And I was also in one of the uh, committees for resolving some problem of three-year integrated teacher education program with uh, in comparison to two-year BA with regard to the uh, recruitment. Uh, we were working for this NCTE and now due to the uh, lack of these uh, uh, responses by the stakeholders, uh, the framework for teacher education uh, instead of 2021. And even this year also, there is also a second wave of COVID and it could not be uh, because of unavoidable situations. So it is being postponed by another year. And now I just spoke about the teacher education and the integrated teacher education program. There are a few implications of this four-year integrated teacher education uh, program. What are these uh, uh, implications? So the four-year integrated teacher education program, definitely it is going to offer student teachers an opportunity to critically reflect on notions of learning and teaching that they have formed from their own experience and to move beyond them. And they need to appreciate that learning encompasses many dimensions because the students for a four-year integrated teacher education program are going to join after plus two. So they have a long duration in order to reflect on their learning. They learn the disciplinary subjects as well as the uh, educational subjects as well as the pedagogy together. But now what is happening in the present uh, uh, teacher education program, the students who have learned their disciplinary subjects in some institutions, and then once they learn the disciplinary subjects, then they come to the teacher education uh, institutions to learn the pedagogy. But what is happening, there is not much of a integration. They cannot reflect much on it. So that is the reason so that the students learn the disciplinary subjects as well as the pedagogy side by side so that they can reflect upon. And the student should also be able to encompass many dimensions like knowledge, skills, values, beliefs, attitudes, and habits. Because attitudes, beliefs, values, habit formation, it takes a long time. So one, hour, one year program, teacher education program was highly inadequate. Now with the two year teacher education program, we are able to make up to some extent, but with a four year, like any other uh, profession, like when we talk about medical profession, legal profession, or maybe a technical profession. Now, if at all, if teacher education is going to become a professional degree, so it will be the students are going to be there for four years. With all that, we can equip the students not only with knowledge, but also skill values, beliefs, attitudes, and habits, because attitudes, beliefs, and habit formation, it takes a lot of time. So four-year period is going to be an adequate period for developing all these aspects. Now, when we talk about the curricular resources creation by teachers has been seen as an important process of teacher professional development, such resources are likely to better correspond to the local needs of the teachers. And of course, we all know that uh, like curricular resources, very, very important. Now, the ICTs, digital information and communication technologies offer a lot of possibilities for the teachers to design and develop digital curricular resources. And in order to create such type of resources, and of course, we are the general education policy, NEP 2020, it has spoken about Diksha. So you can go in as teacher educators or maybe as teachers, Diksha, you know, digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. So this is one of the national teacher uh, platform. It is an initiative of a MHRD, which is accessible online to all the teachers. So through this platform, the teachers can, maybe there are so many uh, domains are there, the teachers can access a lot of uh, 
uh, applications, even on an Android phone and all that. And a lot of materials will be available to the teachers so that they improve their curricular knowledge and they can use those materials with that uh, Diksha is going to be created or the Diksha is created for the sake of teachers so that they develop professionally as well as it's for knowledge sharing. And another important major preoccupations of quality education has been promoting reflective practices among all practitioners. NEP has spoken about whether it is in-service teachers or pre-service teachers, all need to develop these reflective practices. Like it's not just merely teaching what, but also how to teach and why to teach, whether what has been taught is been properly taught. So these reflective practices need to become part of our in service teacher education programs the teachers should learn these reflective practices and reflective professions can definitely contextualize the knowledge to attend to issues once they become reflective teachers reflective professionals so whatever is the situation whatever is the problem definitely they raise to the occasion in their workplace and they solve the problem so definitely the nep has spoken about maintaining journal for teacher development groups, peer interactions, reflections over student portfolios, feedbacks to be obtained from various, uh, maybe it may be students, maybe for parents, maybe community, maybe higher authorities, maybe from the core comprehensive violation can also facilitate reflective practices. I'm going a bit faster uh, so that I may complete all my uh, slides. I hope it is okay. Maybe during the questioning, uh, session, I uh, you can get clarification in case you require. And uh, when I, we speak about so many, uh, like definitely implications of uh, the NEP speaking about integrated teacher education program, and maybe the closing of uh, closing down of institutions which are running two-year BA program by 2030, and definitely it has its own uh, implications. And at the same time, it has certain challenges, and there are certain things which the the NEP is silent about. So there these to be taken as challenges when we are talking about uh, this NEP 2020. So the NEP 2020 puts forward many policy challenges when it comes to teachers and teacher education to ensure that all students at all levels of school education are taught by passionate, motivated, highly qualified, professionally trained and well-equipped teachers. But however, it is not clear with regard to certain concerns. We are talking about Wow, what should be the quality of the teachers? How should be our uh, uh, teachers? But there are certain issues, there are certain aspects that it has not uh, spoken very clearly that how we should go about in order to prepare such teachers having all objectives. Like for example, the integrated uh, four-year integrated teacher education program is considered as a multidisciplinary and integrated dual major bachelor's degree in education as well as a specialized subject is considered as the minimal degree qualification for school teachers recruitment. So it has spoken by 2030, all teacher education institutions are going to be converted into four year integrated teacher education programs and they would move, around, move along with the multidisciplinary higher education institutions instead of standalone. Now, what about the recruitments of candidates with two year and one year BA degree recommended by NEP? 2020 for bachelor's and master's degree holders. And at the same time, it is not very clear. It is said the institutions which are running four year integrated BA program in multidisciplinary institutions can also run a two year BA program for the graduates as well as one year BA program for the integrated four year BA program or maybe even for master's holders. Why should they do? a BA degree of one year or two year if there are no recruitments because when it is going to become mandatory requirement to have a four year integrated BA program to become a teacher and that is not clear anywhere where there, there is going to be any avenues for these people with these degrees. And now also the policy emphasizes the sweeping uh, structural redesign of the curriculum in teacher education it definitely it is a welcoming step. But in order to develop, develop, deliver this curriculum, we need to create a large pool of trained teacher educators who are trained in and understand the curricular and pedagogical needs. Many of the curricular changes require substantial mindset shifts on the part of the teacher educators, teachers, as well as parents. We are talking about 
how should be the teachers like so many adjectives in order to prepare such teachers in an in-service teacher education programs we need to definitely have a large pool of trained teacher educators first of all and they also require a substantial training substantial orientation and a lot of shift in the mindset on the part of the teacher educators teachers as well as the parents and how that is going to happen and what should be the uh, how is it that the policy makers and what should be the avenues and what should be the orientation programs and how should teacher educators be trained and don't know where it is being specified and also NEP 2020 provides teacher eligibility test will now be extended to cover teacher across all the stages that would be conducted uh, the NTA test scores in the corresponding subjects will also be considered for recruitment. So the uh, National Testing Agency is going to conduct this test, that is teacher eligibility test, which is mandatory from foundational to secondary or senior secondary level. But now we have uh, seen, like in our country, like as the Justice J.S. Verma Committee report of 2012 revealed that on an average, 85% of the teachers failed to qualify the post-qualification competency test. That is the center teacher eligibility test was not qualified by 85% of the teachers. If this teacher eligibility test is mandatory for all levels, if 85% of the teachers at present are not able to qualify, how are we going to prepare and how are we going to recruit teachers and what should be the additional remedial like maybe the policy like in order to our guidelines in order to see that that our student teachers become who can be qualified in this type of a test and a new standard will establish a four-year integrated BA degree and gradually such uh, four-year integrated teacher education programs or institutions to move into multidisciplinary higher education colleges or universities, including public institutions through appropriate funding for this purpose by shutting down the substandard and standalone teacher education institutions by 2030. This is what is being uh, envisioned in the NEP 2020. But what about the public and granting aid institutions which cannot be transformed into multidisciplinary colleges, either for lack of space to expand, either horizontally or vertically, especially in metropolitan cities. So if it is a private institution, no problem. If at all, if they are running the degree programs and all that, maybe it may be easy. But there may be the public uh, teacher education standalone institutions. Maybe there are grant in aid institutions. If they cannot be transferred into multidisciplinary colleges, right, for lack of space to expand either horizontally and vertically, what should be future of such type of educational institutions which are having a long standing and very reputed and very credible institutions? How are we going to solve the problems, especially when it comes to metropolitan cities? So that is another important challenge that we need to think about when it is coming to the dislocation of these institutions. Now, another important thing is that as per NEP 2020, four-year integrated BA degree will be minimum for, and this is what I have already uh, spoken, from 2030 onwards, only the four-year integrated BA degree will be minimum qualification for teacher recruitment, and it is for right from foundational stage to the secondary or senior secondary stage by 2030 only these programs are going to be there and it, there is a contradiction in the NEP at one point it says only such institutions who are running four-year integrated teacher education are going to be continued with 2030 and only such institutions uh, can run two-year BA and one-year BA but whether these two year BA and one year BA is going to be continued after 2030 or it is going to be abolished after 2030 is not clear in the NEP 2020. And now these are some of the important challenges as teacher educators, as teachers, 
we need to think about when we are talking about four year integrated teacher education programs which are of course definitely going to have an edge over maybe a one year or a two year teacher education program and there we we can develop the professions and the professionals as the teachers as professionals with a professional pride but at the same time with regard to certain issues or the challenges which are right now i have put it across the nep is silent about it so these some of these challenges we need to address maybe in various forums and the various agencies which are going to be uh, created by the mhrd are may be created by various governmental organization they should come out with so many uh, uh, problem solving uh, maybe uh, uh, various problem solving abilities so that we can meet these challenges and see that the teacher education program especially when it becomes the four year integrated teacher education program we can continue successfully sorry so in the conclusion i would like to say this national education 2020 is definitely a welcoming uh, uh, document and also an ambitious and reimagination of india's education system into a modern progressive and equitable one it brings in ambitious changes that could transform the education system but the key that very very important aspect that the very vital thing for its uh, successful execution as well as for its good implementation what is required the call policy calls for dramatic simplification of decision making structures and reprioritization of budgetary resources in years to come without appropriate and adequate funding right the reprioritization of whatever the budget that is being given to education right from the foundational stage to the higher or to the tertiary education and the uh, definitely a heartful implementation then only it can lead the lead to the successful implementation of national education policy of 2020 many states they have started working towards the implementation of this policy even karnataka has also had a lot of uh, uh, experts in order to implement this new education policy at all levels as it is spoken in nep 2020 and there are a lot of uh, webinars have been conducted at a government level and they are also uh, thinking of implementing the national education policy in, in toto so definitely if at all if you want to be successful it calls for maybe the proper decision making structures the budgetary allocations as well as full heart support and the mind or the attitude to support this education policy then only we can be successful so this is in brief i have tried to give you the implementation of the uh, the teacher education policy as it is uh, reflected in 2020 and i have gone beyond like uh, not only the teachers and teacher education the integrated four-year teacher education but also reflecting my own views in the form of challenges that we are going to face like how we are going to resolve those challenges as teacher educators we all need to think about it very consciously and work coordinately so that we can implement this nep 2020 thank you so much for uh, a uh, your uh, very patient uh, hearing uh, for a uh, one hour long uh, uh, lecture and uh, now any questions on your part i would like you to uh, just ask or whatever it is thank you so much thank you ma'am for your presentation it was indeed very helpful uh, now i would request the participants to ask questions is there any questions from anybody Gargi Chatterjee, do you have any questions? Any questions, participants? No, ma'am, I have no questions. Anybody? People from outside West Bengal? I can see many joining from outside West Bengal. Okay. From Assam, from Nagpur, okay. from Bangalore. Okay, very nice from from um, arunachal pradesh very nice from gohati people please please put up some questions or just 
just share something with us so it makes Maybe it more light have your observations yes like after the presentation i had my own uh, opinion i had my own concerns raised with regard to the four year integrated the policy like what challenges we need to face probably as uh, stakeholders are as teacher educators you may also have thought of like uh, when we are implementing this uh, teacher education new teacher education programs like what might be and uh, what should be there may be such type of questions in your mind that you may also share it on this platform so that we all know like what other teacher educators think about it the uh, ma'am kaushik yes. das kaushik das okay. you have a question can you please yeah please please, please ask the question kaushik das Yes, Kaushik Das. Oh. Hello? Okay, his question I'm reading out. He's written in the chat box. Yeah, please tell me. Is the institute... Ah. No, it is breaking. Voice is breaking. No, I couldn't hear your question. The voice is breaking. Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Fulfill. Uh, uh, object uh, miss uh, 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 no i am not able to hear the question the voice is breaking would you please see the question see there no i okay, can't I'll, I'll say it once more i'll say it once more yes yes i'll say it once more shoma are you there okay one minute Ma ma'am the question Gargi, please read the question ma'am the question is from the shoma, please read the question from the chat box Ah. Gargi, Gargi, please yes, read the question. Okay. And the question is, is the Institute of Advanced Studies of Education fulfill the objectives of NEP 2020 regarding teacher education or any teacher education universities? Ma'am? Uh, what I would like to say uh, to this question, uh, we may believe that uh, the advanced institutes of teacher education and the university departments of education uh, they are probably more equipped compared to the other institutions or maybe private institutions uh, and of course i don't believe it so uh, because with every uh, policy uh, there are a few requirements which every institutions may not be having ready with whether it comes to whether it is infrastructure or maybe the resources or maybe the change of curriculum the change of pedagogy everything requires a lot of shift a lot of shift that again it requires some sort of like when we are talking about a lot of shift and we are when we are talking about maybe in a teacher education program all these days we were preparing in service teachers only for teaching the normal children and now we need to teach the uh, prepare the in service teachers or maybe the student teachers to teach even children with special needs and maybe children having disability and definitely that requires a special infrastructure or maybe the orientation, maybe a training on the part of the existing teachers or maybe the appointment of a new faculty, right? It definitely, whether it is a university department or advanced institutes of education, once again, they need to re-equip not only the existing uh, 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 other private institutions or other aided institutions, including the advanced study centers as well as the university departments. Definitely all need to re-equip themselves and uh, it is mandatory for everyone. Thank you so much. Shujit Shamanto, can you ask your question? Thank you. Thank you, Koshik Das. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. Shujit Shamanto, yes. Uh, Sudeshna, yes, yes. Please, please, go ahead. Okay, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, I need a clarification regarding the qualification of the teachers, those who are teaching in the B.A. For instance, uh, okay. these days, uh, the teachers, those who are teaching in B.A. colleges, they are either uh, qualified net in education or in pedagogical subjects. Now, once the implementation of this four-year integrated uh, BA takes place, so those for the, during that time, do the teachers need to qualify net in the pedagogical subjects, or net will be uh, net in education will be sufficient for that? Okay, it's a very good question. Like among the various challenges that I presented to you, where NEP is silent on certain things. 
and which are not clear and even with regard to the qualification of teacher educators we only talking about how to prepare teachers and what should be their skills values and what should be the qualification of a teacher school teacher but nowhere they have spoken about what should be the qualification of a teacher educator at present whatever the nct has decided right now that is the qualification that as what you spoke that is the qualification maybe yes. i don't know when we are talking about the, uh, the teacher education curriculum framework when the nct is going to make which is postponed to 2022 they, they may probably rethink about it and they may think about maybe what should be the mandatory qualification whether the existing qualification is adequate or whether they need to once again have a qualification maybe in a disciplinary subject whatever it is so that yes. might probably come become may become a part of this curriculum teacher education curriculum framework of 2022 so let's wait and see because nowhere the nep has spoken about the qualification and the training and the understanding of teacher educators and what should be done with regard to the teacher educators when it comes to training the student teachers thank yes. you sudeshna it is a very very thoughtful question all the best to you thank you so much thank you, thank you. any any more questions then other other any questions sujit sharkar some sujit sharkar sujit sharkar okay sujit sharkar hum sujit shamonto yeah sujit shamonto sorry shamonto yeah shamonto he's not speaking up but his question i cannot make out what is written what will be fate ah. now 2020 if any state government he's not finished the question i i cannot make out anything from the question that is written in the chat box so if you can please speak up that will be helpful shujit shamanto if you can speak up please if you can speak up shujit shamanto shujit yes please no i don't think he wants to speak so um what is his question what is his question he he didn't frame it properly he's written mm -hmm. what will be fate now 2020 if any state government uh against it i didn't i don't, I, don't, I can't make out anything of it he's not complete question ma'am rojit chamun to wrote something if any state government implements uh, any in 2020 is it something to do with uh, in case if implementation of any 2020 what is the fate of the present two year teacher education program is it something like that no i cannot make a okay okay oh he saying yes he saying yes okay okay uh, mr sujit saman uh, if at all if any uh, state governments are thinking of implementing any p 2020 uh, uh, right now and uh, probably they may Uh, ask the institutions, uh, teacher edu existing teacher education institutions, to convert themselves into a four-year integrated teacher education programs, and that might be very very difficult immediately to do so. And we can also say that the NEP 2020 uh, has uh, relaxed, uh, like earlier uh, when our MHRD uh, Minister uh, the Javadekar Ji he said by 2018 or 20. all the two, two year teacher education program institutions are going to be closed down and only four year integrated teacher education program institutions are going to be uh, retained or maybe going to be converted into two year four year integrated teacher education program but uh, it did not happen due to various reasons and now our nep 2020 has relaxed up to 2030 so maybe the institutions right now may may start those who are interested in continuing to move towards making an infrastructural or maybe human resources supporting or maybe moving to into a multidisciplinary uh, institutions thinking of that so that by 2030 they get converted into uh, four year integrated teacher education program because after 2030 they are not going to be recognized or they are going to be closed down i feel that if the state governments probably and even in uh, bangalore university and many of the other two more universities and i am working as a board of studies chairperson and an lic there are so many institutions who have already applied for integrated teacher education programs maybe more than uh, uh, probably some uh, 50 60 institutions have applied the recognition is yet to come and it may take 
and I heard that there are around uh, uh, 18 or 19,000, I am not very sure, during one of the meetings, somebody, uh, one of the deputy secretary was saying, they are still in the process of uh, scrutiny, and it all takes not only scrutiny, but also the visit has to happen, recognition has to happen, and then the uh, institutions has to be started. I feel that probably it may take uh, maybe a year or uh, two, and still there is a relaxation till 2030. And by that time, we can think of converting or moving into multidisciplinary and converting our two-year BA into a four-year integrated teacher education program. Uh, is it uh, uh, fine, uh, Mr. Sudhis uh, Samant? <laughs> is that what you wanted? <sighs> He, he does not answer. Okay. Uh, so, um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your clarifications. Yeah. Uh, it was indeed very helpful. Thank you for uh, uh, joining us in this uh, webinar. And uh, thank you. Thank you for being so helpful. And uh, with your permission now, we'll move on to the to our next and the last session yes. as a speaker. I would also like to thank all of you yes. for being giving this opportunity. I'm very happy to be a part of this uh, uh, online and the virtual uh, program. And uh, all of you wish you all the best for organizing such a good uh, national webinar. Stay blessed and stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank so you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Safety. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Uh, moving over to our uh, third and the last session uh, of this day, we are highly privileged to have amongst us Professor Joyanti Das, Department of Education, Calcutta University. Dr. Joyanti Das graduated from Gokhil Memorial College in Education Honors and stood first in BA, MA, MPhil, and BA course. She started her career as an assistant professor in Netaji Nagar College for Women and joined the Education Department, University of Calcutta in 2006 and is still working till date. She has published over 20 research articles, more than five books, and has been the sole editor to the journal An Exploration of Research in Education. She holds membership of all India Association of Educational Research and the Council for Educational Administration and Management and has also been on the editorial board of two international journals. She has extensive responsibilities in the field, sorry, she has shouldered extensive responsibilities in the field of academic administration. It's a never ending list to name a few. She has been the secretary of postgraduate faculty of arts, commerce and law. At present, she's the chairperson of the undergraduate board of studies that we all know, convener of the PhD departmental research advisory committee, and has also been the head of the department from 2016 to 2018. She has supervised more than 20 MPhil dissertations apart from supervising eight PhD students and was also awarded the best program officer for NSS in 2011 and still works as program officer of the NSS Unit 1. She has completed about one major research project under the ICSSR and one minor research project under the UGC. She's presently working for the UGC UPE2 program. She has also acted as resource person in various national and international seminars and webinars till date. May I take this opportunity to welcome Professor Joyanti Das. Thank you. Many, many thanks. And uh, really, it's a privilege for giving an opportunity uh, for me to deliver a lecture on NEP 2020, a very significant uh, area uh, nowadays, uh, especially in this uh, pandemic situation. And first of all, uh, I wish to extend my uh, deep appreciation to the chief patron, Dr. Punima Biswas, Principal Shunanath College for Women, and uh, IQSC Director, Dr. Pandey, to develop this fine job pertinent lecture. And uh, thanks to uh, dear mom and Shubrato, uh, joint conveners, and special thanks to uh, mom, uh, 
as my colleague and my batchmate, uh, working from long, long days from masters to till death. Uh, really, thanks for inviting me for this kind of lecture. Just I want to share something. Uh, this is my uh, topic, that is uh, impact of uh, national education policy. It is visible. Is it? Vi it is visible. Yes, 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 ma'am. Yes, ma uh, the main topic is uh, that is impact of national education policy on uh, students and teachers. And you know that uh, national education policy it is a comprehensive framework to guide the development of education in the country. And till date, um, uh, we have seen three national education policies that uh, first uh, came in 1968 and second in 1986 and 1992. That was the uh, revised part of 1986. And the uh, uh, third is, uh, that is the NEP uh, 2020 uh, 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 released. And uh, here, what I want to share, that is, the, the uh, I have divided the total lecture into two parts, that is, on students, uh, on students' part and uh, on uh, teachers. So major improvis improvisation on uh, students' aspect, that is, uh, schooling starts at the age of three years now, mother tongue as medium of instruction, no UGC, AICT, NCT, science, arts, commerce gets blurred, and FYUP program returns and no more dropouts. Actually, the schooling starts at the age of three years now. That means the new education policy expands age group 6 to 14 years of mandatory schooling to 3 to 18 years of schooling. And the NEP introduces uh, uh, the three years of preschooling age group of three to six years under the school curriculum. And the new system will have 12 years of schooling. I'm <coughs> sorry. <coughs> the school, uh, new years of schooling with three years of Anganwari or uh, preschooling. And with an emphasis on early childhood care and education, that is SSE. The 10 plus 2 structure of school curriculum is to be replaced by 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 curricular structure corresponding to ages 3 to 8, 8 to 11, uh, and 11 to 14, and 14 to 18 years, respectively. And um, um, talking about mother tongue as medium of instruction, that is the NEP puts focus on the student's mother tongue as the medium of instruction, even as it sticks to the three language formula, but also mandates that no language would be imposed on anyone. And the NEP only recommends the mother tongue as medium of instruction and not make it compulsory. So the policy uh, uh, document uh, states that uh, children learn and grasp non-trivial concept more quickly in their home language. And uh, uh, so far, higher education concern, that is no UGC, AICT, NCT, that is Higher Education Commission of India, HECI, will be set up as a single overarching umbrella body for entire higher education, excluding medical and legal education. And public and private higher education institutions will be governed by the same set of norms for regulation, accreditation, and academic standards. So government will phase out the affiliation of colleges in 15 years and stage-wise mechanism is to be established for granting graded autonomy to college. Science, arts, commerce gets blood. That means under NEP 2020, there will be no rigid separation between arts and sciences, between curricular and extracurricular activities, between vocational and academic streams, and students can select subjects of their liking across the uh, stream Always, uh, already um, we are going through the uh, CBCS and vocational education will start in uh, schools from the sixth grade and will include uh, internship. 
and FIUP program, that is four-year undergraduate program, returns and no more dropouts. And under the NEP, undergraduate's degree will be of either three or four-year duration with multiple exit options within this period. And college will be mandated to give certificate after completing one year in a discipline or field, including vocational and professional areas, a diploma over two years of study or a bachelor's uh, degree after a three years program and uh, obviously it is very much important that government will also establish an uh, academic bank of credit for digitally storing academic credits on from different HEIs so that this can be transferred and counted towards uh, degree earned. Now I am coming to the main points that is the major aspects in view of students that is NEP 2020 that is free boarding facilities in JNB. That is, uh, free boarding facilities will be built matching the standard of Jahar Navada Vidala, particularly for students who are from socioeconomically disadvantaged ba background, but especially those students who are from socioeconomically disadvantaged background, for them, free boarding facilities uh, in the Jahar Navada Vidala. Next is any uh, dedicated unit for digital and online learning. It means that a, a dedicated unit for the purpose of uh, orchestrating the building of digital infrastructure, digital content and capacity building will be created in the MHRD to look after the e-education needs of both school and higher education. And a comprehensive set of recommendations for promoting online education consequent to the recent rise in epidemics and pandemics in order to ensure uh, preparedness with alternative modes of quality education whenever and wherever traditional and in-person modes of education are not possible had been covered. And uh, next is National Scholarship Portal for SC, ST, OBC, uh, SEDGs uh, students to be expanded. That is, uh, efforts will made to incentivize <coughs> the merit of students belonging to SC, ST, OBC, and other SEDGs. And the National Scholarship Portal will be expanded to support, foster, and uh, track the progress of students receiving scholarships. And private uh, higher education institutions will be encouraged to offer larger numbers of free ships and scholarships to their students. When at present, it is going on and various kinds of uh, scholarships for the um, uh, students and they are uh, availing these kinds of scholarships. And the next point is that uh, various uh, new provisions for children with disabilities, already uh, previous speaker pointed on it. Uh, children with disabilities will be enabled uh, to fully participate in the regular schooling process from the foundational stage to higher education with support of educators with cross disability training, resource centers, accommodation, assistive uh, devices, appropriate uh, technology uh, based tools and other support mechanism tailored to suit their needs and every state or district will be encouraged to establish bulbs as a special daytime boarding school to participate in art related career related and pre related activities and free school infrastructure can be used as uh, shamajik chetana kendras Next is no hard separation of stream for uh, students. That is, students will be given increased flexibility and choice of two subjects to study. And especially, uh, particularly in uh, secondary school, including subjects in physical education, uh, suppose the arts and crafts and vocational skills. And there will be no hard separation among curricular, extracurricular, or co-curricular among arts, humanities, and sciences, or between vocational or academic streams. Next uh, is coming experiential learning in all stages. Experiential learning in all stages means that will include hands-on learning, arts integrated and sports integrated education, storytelling based pedagogy among others as standard pedagogy and classroom and transactions will shift towards competency based learning and education from traditionally lecture method. Next content will focus on idea and uh, application, then problem solving. 
that is the mandated content will focus on key concepts ideas applications and problem solving and teaching and learning will be conducted in a more interactive manner and next is that is nios that is open schools to offer courses for grades 3 5 and 8 that is NIOS and state open schools will also offer A, B, and C levels that are equivalent to grade 3, grade 5, and A. That means A means grade 3, uh, B that is uh, grade 5, and, uh, and C is that is grade 8 of the former school system. And secondary education programs that are equivalent to grades uh, 10 to 12, we know that are vocational education courses or programs and adult literacy and life enrichment uh, programs. So just uh, as usual, what it uh, it is going on, and nutrition and health cards, regular health checkups for school students. That means the nutrition and health, but including uh, not only that uh, physical health, including mental health of children, will be addressed through healthy meals and regular health checkups. And health cards will be issued to monitor the same. Next is that uh, tech-based option for adult learning through apps. TV channels, etc. That is uh, quality technology based options for adult learning, such as apps, online courses, modules, satellite based TV channels, online books, and uh, ICT equipped libraries and adult education center, etc., will be developed. Already from uh, this point of view, I can say that uh, uh, some of these are uh, uh, are going on uh, going going on regular basis. That is uh, uh, online modules and apps. We are very much acquainted with this nowadays. And online books, uh, ICT equipped libraries, and uh, uh, we, I can't say that ICT equipped all uh, institutions are ICT equipped, but they are trying for the best and the adult education centers it is uh, uh, prevalent in our uh, society and the next is that is uh, variable models for broad uh, board exams or for board exams uh, annual semester uh, modular uh, exams that is uh, boards may over time also develop further variable models of board exams such as uh, annual or uh, semester mon then modular board exams and offering all subjects of beginning with mathematics at two levels and two parts exams or objective type or descriptive type next is that is uh, importance of board exam to be reduced and exam can be conducted twice a year that is in order to reduce the importance and stress of board exam exam will be conducted in two parts that is objective and descriptive and exam can be conducted twice a year and board exam should promote knowledge application rather than rote learning the that uh, the, that is mentioned in our uh, main part that is uh, nep uh, nep main uh, the main part and next is coding to be taught from class 6 onwards that is uh, students of class 6 and onwards will be taught coding in schools as a part of 21st century skills uh, school education uh, secretary uh, already mentioned it and already Whitehead Juniors uh, started this kinds of program for the school going children. And next is undergraduate degree courses to have multiple exit options. That is the undergraduate degree courses will be of either three or four year duration with multiple exit options and a certificate course after completing one year in a discipline or field, including vocational and professional areas or a diploma after two years of study or a bachelor's degree after a three year program and the four year multidisciplinary bachelor's program, however, shall be the preferred option. Next is IITs to become multidisciplinary institution opening doors for humanities students and even engineering institutions such as IITs will move towards more holistic and multidisciplinary education with more arts and humanities. That is uh, students of arts and humanities will aim to learn more science and next is uh, what is multidisciplinary institution? That is a university will mean a multidisciplinary institution that offers undergraduate and graduate programs with high quality teaching, research and community engagement. That means an institution where undergraduate and, and uh, postgraduate course and others, uh, other related courses will be going on simultaneously. 
Next is one large multidisciplinary institution in or near every district by 2030. That is, NEP aims at setting up at least one large multidisciplinary institution in or near every district by the year 2030. Next is uh, all higher education institute to become multidisciplinary institutions. That means, uh, um, uh, as a recommendation, NEP suggests that by 2040, all higher education institutes shall aim to become multidisciplinary institutions, and each of which will aim uh, will aim to have 3,000 or more students. Next is a uh, new academic session to begin in September to October. Actually, uh, we are going through this kind of pandemic situation and the uh, new academic session will begin in September, October. And the delay is actually due to the unprecedented uh, coronavirus disease, that is COVID-19 outbreak. And the government aims to introduce the policy before the new session begins. Now I am turning on the next part. That is uh, the next part, that is uh, early childhood care and education. Here I want to highlight some hits and misses. That means uh, on the aspect of early childhood care and education, what are the hits and what are the misses? That is the hits part is, that is extend the right to education eligibility window from 6 to 14 years to 3 to 18 years. And with the goal of having 100% of children school ready by 2030, the policy pushes for universalization of uh, early childhood care education and investment uh, in infrastructure such as uh, play equipment and uh, child friendly buildings, as well as continuous professional development that is uh, CPD of uh, PCC teachers and Anganwari workers through a six month certification program, including some online components. So what are the misses? That is maintaining the status quo of having curriculum under one ministry and implementation with three different ministries. And till date, these strategies has led to poor integration of ECC with elementary education. And the NEP's recommendation of a joint task force doesn't seem like an adequate measure to address this well-known gap. And not only that, a lack of clarity around whether every Anganwadi or pre-primary learning center will be equipped with a high quality teacher and a worker or not. We don't know. And for this kind of uh, notice or this kind of messages, uh, till date is not mentioned uh, in the NEP or is not discussed. Next, that is foundational literacy and numeracy. That is FLN, Foundational Literacy and Numeracy. So what are the hits regarding foundational literacy and uh, numeracy? That is a three-month preparatory courses for students, access to digital content through energized textbooks, that is ETB Diksha. And student-led peer learning and community tutoring are recommended as some of the means to achieve 100% foundational level, that is up to grade three learning by uh, 2025 and teacher vacancies uh, to be filled in a time bound manner with a priority to disadvantaged uh, areas and sections of the society. And what, what are the misses? That is no definition of what is basic text is against which literacy will be measured. And the national book promotion policy is mentioned. However, more than a policy on books, it is important to prioritize access to relevant age appropriate reading materials across different languages for students, which is already an ongoing focus of the government programs such as uh, Shamugru Shiksha. We know that, that uh, uh, RMSA, that is a Shamugru Shikha. And the, another part is that a very unintended consequences, that is an exclusive focus on uh, foundational learning might take away from students being able to master grade level learning outcomes and further the impetus uh, to children who are considered gifted and are those who are high performer might be restricted as a result. Next is that uh, universal access to education at all levels and the main hits point, uh, points are uh, commitment to achieve 100% gross enrollment ratio, that is GER, across all levels by 2030. And uh, rigorous tracking of 100% of children through a technology-based platform to ensure no one is left behind. That is, uh, it, it is a uh, previous uh, concept that is a zero rejection. And the encouraging uh, different public-private partnership school models to cartel the number of dropouts and uh, uh, out of uh, school children. But uh, what are the misses? That is no clarity 
on the ratio of social workers or counselors to children and at uh, and at what level they will be appointed where especially uh, at the uh, cluster level or whatever they will be sourced from existing personnel to other ministries and no clarity about the social and professional value of the open uh, learning out for open learning courses and no clear mention of legal violations that means including child marriage and child labor which contribute to school drop dropouts these are not mentioned especially when in detailed discussion detailed discussion nowhere in the nep next is curriculum and pedagogy in schools the main hit spot are that the policy encourages local languages to be the medium of instruction which i have said earlier please have to get five and uh, pro promotes bilingual education and textbooks for uh, learning and the suggested 5 plus 3 plus 3 4 class system focuses on defining uh, learning levels at each uh, critical juncture taking a multidisciplinary approach and new age uh, subject that is uh, uh, coding and computational thinking as uh, told earlier and here the misses uh, main misses point are that, uh, that is uh, uh, there is no definite uh, decision or guideline around the language or instruction and for example uh, I can say that uh, the policy uh, says to use local languages wherever possible which leaves a lot of room for the status quo which is existing free language formula to continue especially in the case of high performing government run school systems such as uh, Kendru Vidalai. And the uh, next is that the uh, issue of children's mother tongue and home language being different from the local language used for instruction in schools. And the policy asks education to integrate uh, Indian knowledge system covering uh, subjects like yoga, Indian philosophy, and Adivashi or indigenous ways of learning and uh, in the syllabus. However, upskilling educators who presently struggle even to teach the basic syllabus to integrate these complex ideas in a secular and inclusive manner is uh, definitely a challenge for them. And the uh, next is that testing and assessment. Uh, already we have seen that uh, the main hit part is that the focus on measurable learning outcomes at all levels on the newly proposed schooling system with testing at third, fifth, eighth grade levels and promoting formative assessment next student choice to be incorporated in the 10th and uh, 12th grade board exam. The policy suggests bring on, doing so by offering freedom of subject choice, allowing best of two attempts and choice of difficulty. That is a standard and higher level. And but the uh, what are the misses? That is the policy suggests formation of two new agencies, that is PARAC and NTA that is a national testing agency, and then a performance assessment, that is PARAKIS, performance assessment review analysis of knowledge for holistic development and national testing agency respectively. And these new agencies could lead to over centralization and potentially over testing of children at national and state level and overlap between importance given to 12th standard board exam as well as common university entrance exam after 12th standard and uh, funding linked to performance or states may actually result in low income and low performing states being uh, strapped for central funding in future. And the, uh, ne uh, and the next part is that is uh, equitable and inclusive education and the main hits part are the gender inclusion fund which supports female and transgender uh, students by driving uh, state level inclusion activities, developing sufficient infrastructure for safety and targeted bo boarding and special education zone that is SEZ and uh, Kostilba Gandhi Balika Vidalais that is KGB, uh, KGBVs uh, or KVs or Kendra Vidalai, whatever, um, to be set up in aspirational districts with uh, targeted focus on improving the uh, quantity and quality of learning. But the misses are that is there are no action points or time bound goals on uh, bridging the gap among social categories or for children with special needs only for verbal acknowledgement that uh, inequities uh, exist. And uh, main thing is the issue of female student safety and sexual abuse is not addressed either at the boarding uh, school level or in the gender inclusion fund. And there is no clarity on role, appointment, budget, um, uh, ratio, and uh, so on of the uh, social workers, special educators, and counselors who are required to bridge various uh, development and social inclusion gaps. Next is school complex. The main hit point are that is uh, providing autonomy to plan and implement the initiative locally is a good idea in principle. That is school complex management committee, SCMC. 
and uh, reorganizing smaller schools with very low enrollment into a school complex structure, which connects 10 to 15 such small schools into one administrative uh, unit. But the misses are that is a safe and affo affordable mobility of students and parents is assumed, especially while accessing, uh, accessing uh, shared resources like libraries or balbhavans, laboratories, shamajik kendros, and so on. And uh, this mobility is currently absent and is what necessitated that opening of small schools within one kilometer radius in the first place. And then uh, next or the main part, that is the standard setting and school accreditation, a strong push to bring in transparency and accountability across school by setting standards to a dedicated agency uh, and uh, which incorporate uh, learning related uh, indicators as well as student feedback into uh, school uh, ratings. But the misses are that is uh, with oversight frameworks like school quality assessment accreditation framework that is SQ uh, AAF and the standards by SSA, Chutula SA, and monitoring by Department of Education and regular testing by SSC board. And there is an impression of too much oversight on the school functioning. And these are the actually, these are the lacuna of the uh, uh, present NEP. Uh, so acting um, uh, all in all, um, uh, what we can say that uh, while the policy is not legally bound to any action, it uh, definitely makes clear the uh, government's vision to usher in some landmark changes to the education sector. And as with any other policy, a lot will depend on transparent uh, and swift implementation. And for higher education, I can say that the uh, introduction of single common entrance uh, phase. Join me. Join yes. can, I, can I disturb you once? Your slide is not moving. Yes. Now it is, yes. Now it is moving? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 So the uh, NEP, uh, that is uh, um, uh, the main part is that is uh, uh, establishing Academic Bank of Credit, that is ABC, uh, is definitely a robust idea to store the academic credit that students earn by taking courses from various recognized higher education institutions. And uh, another uh, part is that is uh, internationalization at home, that is NEP 2020 also allows foreign universities and colleges to come to India. And this brings out a challenge for the native institutions to improve the quality of education provided by them. And uh, India has uh, one of the largest network of higher education system in the world with more than 900 universities and 40,000 colleges. And the ministry, uh, another part is that the more holistic and multidisciplinary education, the NEP uh, 2020 claims that a holistic and multidisciplinary education would aim to develop all capacities of human beings, intellectual, aesthetics, uh, uh, social, uh, uh, social, uh, then physical, emotional, and moral in an integral manner. And the NEP 2020 envisions one large multidisciplinary higher education institutions in or near over uh, by uh, every by uh, 2030 and students will get 360 degree holistic report card and which will not only inform about the marks obtained by them in subjects but also their skills and other important these all these hits and uh, misses regarding the school education and regarding the uh, 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 regarding the educational purpose from students point of view now i am coming to the next part that is the teacher's point of view the teacher we know that the uh, teacher must be at the center of fundamental reforms in the education system and the new education policy must uh, help re-establish teachers at all levels as the most uh, respected and essential members of our society because they truly shape our next generation of citizens. And the new education policy must help recruit the very best and brightest to enter the teaching profession at all levels by ensuring uh, livelihood, respect, dignity, and autonomy, while also uh, instilling in the system basic methods of quality control accountability. We know that uh, uh, the uh, common factor is the teacher. 
and the quarterly commission you know has emphasized on the quality competence and uh, character character of teachers and undoubtedly the most significant and uh, the nep 2022 exhorts that the teachers truly shape the future of our children and therefore the future of our nation and while this idea and uh, of an empowered uh, teacher has the potential to move mountains, the ground realities are quite different. That means a teacher can uh, has the potential to move the mountains, but the ground realities are quite different. Actually, it cannot be. The, the Justice Varma Committee report to, uh, 2012 already mentioned that a broken teacher education sector is putting over 370 million children at risk upon inspection scores of private teacher education institutions, that is uh, TEI, were found to have only a foundation stone in the name of infrastructure. And the central teacher eligibility test, that is uh, CTET, and the challenges and issues post-employed range from exploitative uh, employment conditions characterized by uh, ad hocism and poor salaries of one hand to absenteeism, outdated teacher knowledge and skills, and lack of teacher professional, and so on. So recognizing the power of teacher, NEP 2020 has put in place systematic reforms and would help teaching emerge as an attractive profession of choice for bright and talented young minds. Here, the highlighted part, actually today what I want to highlight, the four basic issues related to teachers, that is the uh, status of the teacher in the system and in society, teachers' professional capacity and subject knowledge, teachers' deployment and transfer, and teacher autonomy, uh, appraisal, and accountability. And the first one is the, the teacher uh, recruitment. Actually, while uh, discussing foundational literacy and numeracy as being a core subject, uh, core object of uh, the new policy, NEP actually uh, 2020 states that teacher vacancies will be filled at the earliest in a time-bound manner, especially uh, in disadvantaged areas and areas with large people to teacher ratios or high rates of illiteracy. And special attention will be given to employing local teachers or those who uh, with uh, uh, who are associated with familiarity with local languages and teachers will be trained encouraged and supported with continuous professional development actually uh, the policy is not clear about the working conditions and salaries of these local teachers nor is there any clarity about who will hire them and the idea of contract teachers or uh, para teachers slipped into educational practice in the 1990s without any policy level approval and it entered the system in the district primary education program that is dpp and the continued under the sharva shiksha vision and rashtriya madhyamik shiksha vision and now the samagra shiksha and here uh, teacher uh, recruitment uh, and employment regarding teacher recruitment and uh, employment you see that uh, tet that is, uh, teacher eligibility test will now be extended to cover teachers across all the new stages. That is foundational. Before it was 10 plus 2. Now it will be uh, foundational, preparatory, middle, and secondary. Uh, so, sorry, secondary. That means 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 and total part. Total part that is from foundational to secondary level of school education. And the four subject teachers, uh, TET, that is, as well as NTA, that is National Testing Agency, test course in the corresponding subjects will also be considered for recruitment. And NEP 2020 promotes the idea of recruiting uh, teachers to a school complex and sharing them across the group of schools and uh, to deal with shortage of teachers and particularly for music, dance, art, craft, uh, counselors, then vocational education trainers, classical language teachers, social workers. And there are really a scarcity of teachers in, uh, the, in this particular field. And the NEP 2020 also encourages uh, school complexes to hire local eminent persons or experts as master instructors in various subjects, such as traditional local arts, vocational craft. I mean, those who are uh, locally eminent person, they, if they eager to do this, then they can uh, uh, teach the children. 
Next, and for college and universities, the teacher recruitment, you know that Nate and SET, that is a national level, national level uh, eligibility test, and uh, SET, that is state eligibility test. And uh, for, for the, uh, the, with these two terms, we are very much familiar with that. And the next highlighted part is that teaching career and professionalism. That is the NEP 2020 talks of creating performance uh, standards for teachers clearly spelling out the role of the teacher at different levels of expertise and uh, competencies required for that stage that uh, by 2022 a set of national professional standards for teachers that is NPST, National Professional Standards for Teachers, will be created that will determine all aspects of teacher career management, including tenure, uh, com continuous professional development efforts, salary increases, or that, or that means at which level salary will be increases, all our promotions and other recognitions, all are discussed in detail. And NEP 2020 also talks of teacher audit or performance appraisal that will be carried at regular intervals. These standards for performance appraisal. Actually, in the uh, if we see the world scenario, there are teachers, all the teachers, especially uh, in USA or UK, teachers, those who are uh, in this profession, teachers have to submit their regular appraisal report to the higher authority. So I think for uh, teaching purpose and uh, for uh, uh, upliftment of the teaching quality or the, for the upliftment of the students' quality, I think uh, the, uh, this, is, this should be uh, uh, done very uh, delicately. And uh, I think that uh, uh, it, it, it shall be carried out, uh, carried, uh, carried out at regular intervals. And these standards for performance appraisal uh, will also be formulated. And especially henceforth, promotions and salary increases will not occur based on the length of tenure or seniority. But but only based on such appraisal. This is the very good thing. That is, um, uh, I am senior most, should, uh, that, that means I should be, no, that should not be done. That it, it should be based on such appraisal based. And school teachers must undergo 50 hours of CPD opportunities every year to keep themselves by attending workshops or online teacher development modules for the school teachers. And school principals too must undergo CPD in uh, modules related to leadership, school management, and for implementing competency-based learning. And in addition, international pedagogical approaches will be started studied by NCRT, identified and uh, recommended for assimilation in pedagogical practices in India through CPD. Actually, it is important to acknowledge that there are many interesting ideas uh, strewn around in NEP 2020. And uh, all these would be done by strengthening school complexes to become the effective administrative units for management of schools. And the policy also provides for the creation of parallel bodies for uh, academic matters. But uh, uh, we uh, must say that none of the ideas discussed in the NEP 2020 can be operationalized without a clear roadmap to transform the way teachers are positioned in the educational system. That means detailed discussions, some points on uh, detailed discussion on some points. Um, I uh, didn't uh, uh, observe there. I, I don't know if you see that or if you observe it, but I didn't see. And in service teacher training has been a part of the government of India's centrally sponsored scheme since 1994. And the policy hopes that this will uh, insulate teachers from political pools and pressures and give, give them uh, greater autonomy in the system. And however, there is no mention of whether private uh, school teachers can also use the resources of the school complex. And the, uh, just like uh, the ambiguity in NEP 2020 on teachers' working condition, there is also ambiguity about the teacher recruitment system. Apart from uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, most states do not have a formal teacher recruitment policy. 
and uh, we have also we have Tate and Tate and the implementation of this aspect of this policy is now left then to the interpretation of state government and presently just uh, uh, three or four days ago uh, our chief minister has declared that uh, so many teachers will be recruited and uh, uh, re recruited in uh, forthcoming session so it is a, a positive part of the teacher recruitment uh, policy and in uh, many states, there is a huge shortage of teachers in uh, mathematics, science, commerce, and uh, English. And another challenge uh, starting at us uh, that uh, that how to do with availability of teachers for all subjects because uh, in many states there is a huge shortage of teachers in in these subjects and as it is a many schools located in rural, remote, or tribal areas or um, or girls only schools do not offer science and mathematics at the high secondary level due to uh, mainly scarcity of teachers and uh, in the higher education system. Uh, we see the same picture in so many colleges there are no teachers and there is also there are also uh, so scarcity of teachers and the positive dimension of nep 2020 is that it recommends that all the teachers be appointed to the school complex and that an existing system of transfers and posting should be discontinued and so the teacher now the teachers deployment and uh, transfer that is uh, not just changes in tt and uh, uh, and uh, uh, ba courses that is nep uh, mainly uh, suggest nep mainly uh, excuse me nep mainly suggest that is uh, uh, earlier that uh, as per the new policy by 2030 the minimum degree required by uh, for uh, teaching will be a four year integrated uh, that is a uh, ba and apart from these the teacher eligibility test date will also be changed as per the new school system and the, um, earlier the date was divided into two components please listen minutely earlier the date was divided into two components part 1 and part 2 that is now that the school structure has been divided into four parts, foundational, preparatory, middle, and secondary. And TATE will also be developed accordingly. For subject teachers, suitable TATE or the National Testing Agency, NTA, test course in the corresponding subjects will also be taken into account for recruitment. And then NTA will hold exams for all subjects and common aptitude test. That means, Earlier, the Tate was divided into two components because 10 plus 2, therefore, uh, that reason. But now the total structure has been divided into uh, various parts. That is uh, foundational, preparatory, middle, secondary. So Tate will be, uh, uh, that uh, structure of the Tate will be divided into uh, four parts. This has been discussed. And those who qualify Tate will have to give a demonstration or appear in an interview and show their knowledge of the local language as per the new policy. As per the NEP, interview will become an integral part of the teacher hiring. And these interviews would also assess comfort and proficiency in teaching and the local language. And it would be a must for teachers in private schools as well to qualify it. That means it's very much important that it would be a must for teacher in private school as well to qualify it. Or that means, for private schools, it will be going to mandatory. That means state is must. And the hiring and vacancies in schools will be managed digitally. The uh, technologically uh, technology based uh, comprehensive teacher recruitment uh, requirement uh, planning forecasting exercise will be conducted by each uh, state to assess expected subject wise uh, teacher vacancies over the next two decades. And the, uh, whatever in the uh, if we uh, look into the BA program, that is, uh, since schools will need teachers who can teach in multiple languages and they have knowledge, new age courses like computational thinking, coding, etc. And the BA courses will be of four year duration and dual BA degrees uh, with a focus on one language and having bilingual lectures will be offered too. In the BA programs will all allow specialization in the education of gifted children and one or two year BA option will also be available. And listen minutely that one or two year BA options will also be available because for two year BA will be for candidates having a bachelor degree, that means who has completed BA course. And after that, that is an one year BA programs will be offered only to those. That means two year BA will be 
uh, for the candidates having a bachelor's degree when after completion of bed degree then he or she has to do uh, bed for two years and but uh, one year bed programs will be offered only to those who have completed the equivalent of four year multidisciplinary bachelor's degree or who have obtained a master's degree. The, these candidates will be later hired as subject teacher in the area of specialty or the subject pursued at UG or PG level. And a common guiding set of national professional standards for teachers, that is NPST, will be developed by 2022. And that uh, regarding the teacher development and transfer, uh, uh, it is mentioned that teacher transfers will be halted as per NEP 2020 and transfers will be allowed in very special circumstances. Furthermore, transfers will be conducted through an online computerized system that ensures transparency. Author, that is to maintain <clears throat> transparency uh, uh, online computerized system will be uh, going on. Next is that is um, uh, uh, enculturation of teacher empowerment, that is the autonomy, appraisal, and uh, accountability. That is teacher empowerment. Uh, here, teacher empowerment means investing teachers with the right to participate in determining school goals and policies and to um, uh, exercise uh, professional judgment about who with and how to teach. And uh, uh, I think recognizing the uh, contribution teachers can make in Perform, sorry, in reforming pedagogy to improve the learning outcomes, the NEP 2020 gives teachers autonomy in selecting appropriate pedagogy and encourages them to also ensure socioeconomic emotional learning of their students. That means teachers autonomy means in selecting, especially in selecting appropriate pedagogy. I mean, which kind of <clears throat> teaching is suitable for uh, him, him, your heart, that means for teachers, and which kind of uh, teaching learning process uh, is, uh, is or are suitable for the students also. So this is the, that part called teachers' autonomy. And next is innovative teaching methods that adopted by the teachers to improve the uh, learning outcomes will be recognized documented and shared widely as recommended practices. And the next is reduced teacher isolation. That means uh, close uh, collaboration is recommended among schools with a school complex and also in the college and university uh, complex as uh, it will reduce teacher isolation experienced by teachers working in smaller uh, institutions, smaller schools or small college or create vibrant teacher communities that work collaboratively sharing their best teaching uh, practices. And to help schools and school complexes or institutional complexes evol evolve into vibrant, caring, and inclusive uh, communities of teachers, students, parents, principals, the uh, management, uh, institutional management have been directed to ensure adequate and safe infrastructure, basic amenities and hygiene, computing devices, internet, libraries and sports and recreational resources to all teachers and students, uh, students also. And so here for many decades now we have been hearing about general, generally now uh, none of the ideas uh, actually these are the highlighted part and the none of the ideas discussed in the NEP 2020 can be operationalized without a clear roadmap to transform the way to teachers are positioned in the educational system and to start with there is an urgent need to address the administrative and social status of teachers. Uh, uh, basically, they uh, should not be viewed as the last link of the administration in all villages and urban worlds. And uh, uh, they are expected to furnish wide range of input related data without having the freedom to structure their classroom in such a way as to enable every child to learn. But for many decades now, we have been hearing about teaching at the right level. And this cannot happen without autonomy and freedom. And yes, uh, not, not only me, but uh, you also agree that teachers need to be a part of rigorous appraisal system. One that is a combination of self-appraisal, peer review, and student review. And most importantly, teachers need to be uh, insulated from the decades old 
patronage network for transfers, posting, promotions, and other benefits. And uh, for uh, uh, the problem with the with our policy program project implementation system is that uh, uh, we do not take a holistic view and get down to seriously transforming a system that is clicking and breaking up. And the numbers of schools, number of colleges, universities, institutions, students, teachers has gone up uh, exponentially since the 1990s. But the administrative structure that manages the system has remained unchanged. And uh, already um, uh, uh, we, are uh, we have discussed uh, the main points that is the national testing agencies and uh, another part is that uh, I should uh, mention here that is uh, cutting edge research that is all multidisciplinary universities uh, have been directed to set up an education department and run BA program in collaboration with their uh, with their um, uh, other departments such as psychology, philosophy, sociology, neuroscience, languages, arts, music, history, uh, science, mathematics. And in addition to this, they will also carry out cutting edge research in various aspects of education to enhance the quality of their BA programs. That means those who, uh, who has the ground of uh, mathematics. Uh, in our department, in our university, I have seen that uh, students are eagerly uh, want to do research on uh, language method or mathematics method on or uh, English method. Or there's so many method, so many method papers. And uh, we are eagerly uh, waiting these kinds of students to do uh, research, uh, research work because maybe they are from uh, different backgrounds they are uh, maybe they are from uh, english or uh, science or whatever subjects that they have uh, background but they come to us and propose that ma'am please i want to do uh, research on this uh, area that means maybe his uh, his or her area is mathematics she he or she wants to do our uh, research on that particular area here we suggest that particular students they, uh, that uh, you do uh, you can do but you have to know the pedagogy that is science of teaching and from the mathematics point of view from the methodical point of view you can do it that means how you can improve your uh, uh, teaching uh, procedure through teaching procedure in mathematics through your teaching or through your teaching learning both way processes in this way we suggest the students that you can do it but from pedagogical point of view because when we are when uh, the students will become a future teacher then at that moment he or she she should uh, know that how to teach a subject how to represent the matter in the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to the students in a scientific way then he or she should know the way of teaching and that's why we suggest please do it in in according to according to in this way and the BA degree will teach a range of knowledge, content, and pedagogy, and include strong practicum uh, training. And the curriculum will also uh, include effective techniques in pedagogy, because uh, in our BA, BA, BA syllabus, there are so many. In, in and in and in each, every paper, practicum is there. In each and every paper, practicum is there. Because without practical implementation or without practical output, no teaching will be fruitful. And the shorter post beard certification courses will also be available for uh, career growth of teachers generally who wish to move in more specialized areas of teaching and uh, and the provision of that truly has the potential to enhance the respectability and the acceptance of uh, uh, teaching professionals that all fresh PhD uh, in France will be required uh, to take credit based uh, courses in teaching and uh, learning education uh, uh, in the uh, future aspect. Now, I just I uh, want to sum up that is, uh, what is the uh, how uh, will new education policy affect the future of India? Just uh, for the previous speaker. Um, uh, I can't uh, remember his or her name, um, who raised the question that uh, what is the fate? What is the fate of the uh, of our new education policy? And I think the picture, this picture, actually suits 
because after a long time period of 34 years the new education policy 2020 has replaced the old education system in our country and this new education system would bring change in the overall education framework of India. And with the help of this new education system in the coming time, we may also hope to see bright young adults with an innovative approach towards life and work rather than pawns, uh, obsessing over marks and uh, mugging up bookish knowledge. And if you are wondering how will new education policy affect the future of India, then uh, here we, uh, I want to mention some of the key highlights. That is, uh, new education policy spells a long-term concept with far-reaching influence and will change future challenges into chances by improving a quality education system. And this system will strengthen the culture of innovation, institution, and inclusion. And the adoption of the new education policy is based on the motive at paving the way of transformational reforms in school and higher education system to make India a global knowledge superior. And here, uh, the main part is that, that is the, uh, that how will the new education system affect the future of India? That is important incorporation in the policy that the new education policy 2020, some of the uh, long futures, that is uh, sign language to be, is to be regulated. And it is one of the remarkable movers uh, that teachers, students in the formative years of their life to embrace, uh, to embrace uh, fellow classmates who are visually and auditory impaired and they are not estranged or estranged or left out in any circumstances. And along with this, the vocational activities comprise coding poetry and other extracurricular uh, courses. And the another is that provide versatility. Because as compared to the traditional education policy, the NEP 2020 will make the education system more versatile, right from the kindergarten level. And this new education system is breaking up the traditional 10 plus 2 system and adapting to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system. And assessment and evaluation, the CBSC board, uh, you know, that has always been known for its rote uh, learning and memory-based assessments of students and the, uh, those who have understood the developing significance of progressive and global approach to evaluation, this was the main setback for them. And it was one of the reasons why most parents shifted their words to an international curriculum. And this new education policy has changed this way we used to see uh, report cards and uh, judge students. Here uh, in the report cards, um, just I have seen that uh, no marks, only grade A in the CBSC board because uh, technology-based education, that is uh, in uh, technology-based education will offer to the students and we live in a tech-driven society and most of the decision we make uh, is influenced by technology. And um, obviously, the, uh, the charming part is that students will going uh, global. With the help of this new education uh, system, the students will be going global as this new policy offers a chance to the top 100 international universities to open their branches in India. And going global signifies that the Indian students can get their education in their own country itself by enrolling in the best universities. Already, you know, the international school is there where global type of uh, education uh, uh, is uh, delivering and uh, teachers are uh, 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 preparing themselves in that way. And uh, diversification, that means uh, due to new education policy, the higher education institutions have to become uh, multidisciplinary by 2040, and which signifies that there will not be fixed segregation amid science, arts, commerce. And I think that the, this new education system is permitting the students to opt and explore any stream as per his or her capability and interest. Thank you. Questions, please, participants. Can we have the questions, please? No, I have questions. Be louder, Gargi. Ma'am? Yes. Ma'am, good, good evening. Ma'am, ma yes. ma my question is, uh, NEP said that in Anganwadi or foundational level, there are a lot of trained teachers and workers and also said that about peer tutoring. 
we uh, how can we uh, train the peer for training the students or i think you have heard about the simulated teaching or simulated learning peer group yes, teaching peer group teaching yes, in that way today we are doing in uh, today we are following this kind of uh, system in our uh, university education for the bet students that is peer group teaching because in this pandemic situation it is not possible to uh, uh, continue the uh, practice teaching so here we are emphasizing that please do peer learning peer group teaching because it is very much important for uh, developing uh, uh, language ability and uh, language capacity and obviously very much important for developing uh, the um, uh, what, what should i say that is uh, uh, medium 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 means i want to express the particular uh, any term in this way and another one will express the particular term in another way but blended part that would be come out from this kind of peer teaching so peer group teaching either it may be in uh, same age group or maybe in divergent age group whatever it may be peer group teaching will be the main outcome of any kind of good or successful teaching Uh, Ma'am, I have also another yes. question. Hmm. Ma'am, uh, what is the NEP uh, told about a lot of things about school education? Hmm. If you please uh, tell us the um, uh, status of uh, students of MA in education. Yeah, it's the MA in education that is higher education. So uh, NEP, yes. any policy cannot stress on particular uh, subject, isn't it? it is not possible yes, to state the views on particular subject overall they can recommend it or overall they can say something on that but uh, uh, all over this that under nep 2020 under uh, higher education that uh, already have told that uh, uh, there will be no rigid separation between arts science between curricular and extra curricular activities between vocational and academic streams actually students can select subjects of their li uh, liking across the streams already you have seen that uh, in our cbc system, uh, system if students uh, want to opt uh, music subject along with beside uh, physics they can but here the most important thing is that infrastructure it is really lacking especially in our university in the university of calcutta there are 14 campuses uh, 14 campuses it is not possible to maintain all the classes in all these campuses one camp, uh, one students from economics department she or he wants to uh, learn uh, education from alipur campus and it is not possible to uh, go here or there it is not possible here the all the higher authorities we are suggesting that please Uh, 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 limit your knowledge in your uh, own stream. That is, science science students will uh, select their uh, subjects in the science stream from the science stream. Social science stream will select their subjects from social stream. Yes, uh, there there are uh, various kinds of social sciences. They can opt any uh, any of them, any of the subjects, or uh, they are, as they are liking. So, uh, from this point of view, we can the main problem is infrastructure. Yes, really, infrastructure, and we are uh, suffering a lot because in our university there are fourteen campus. It is not possible to go here and there. Students, it is not possible from the students and from the teacher aspect. How we will go there? It is possible. We have completed one class uh, two to two, uh, three, two to three p.m. Then after that, another class for uh, another campus. it's not possible to go it's there possible. and uh, there are so many problems isn't it oh. thank you ma'am distance is the main thing yes one raja bazaar then see college street and then alipur yes college street raja bazaar and another is barwipur also we have Barwipur. another campus those uh, who are uh, doing agriculture yes how it is possible thank you ma'am any other questions from anybody or uh, dr mahendra shamkul would you like to add on to something
Ma'am, uh, I have a question for JB, ma'am. Ma'am, can you can I ask? Mm hmm. Ma'am, uh, in NEP, the uh, for school education there are BA training. For primary mm -hmm. education, there are DLA training. Mm -hmm. For college teacher. <laughs> what is the no, for the college teachers there is no training at all but uh, they are suggesting that for college teachers um, four years not nowadays but after 10 or 20 years um, uh, it will be implemented that is uh, when four year integrated uh, course will come out and through that particular program automatically teacher will be trained because <laughs> oh yes be it, uh, integrated course means BA BA with BA yes, isn't yes. it and yes, through yes. this uh, uh, way of teaching they will be trained themselves so nothing worried about it and uh, nothing worried about that uh, we have to suffer because uh, no way to overcome it uh, after 10 or 20 years history will say the what is the actual outcome of four years uh, integrated education thank you hello ma'am yes hi ma'am bolchilam je apni jemon bollen je class 6 theke je je policy notun boleche class 6 theke coding shekhano hobe class 6 theke kintu mane ict er upor jor dewa je Secretary can do Putum take in the practical report Joda Hoya chain Utun policy. The theoretical dictate key of it all. Here I want to say that uh, if you see the total uh, tenure that is five plus four plus three plus three, that means school education starts from at the age of three, isn't it? So at the age of three, two, five years means class two. That is totally activity oriented education, activity oriented education, class two up to class two and from three to class three to five. That is the next five plus three, three years uh, education that will be depending on the depth of knowledge, depth of subject knowledge and the from six onwards coding will start. Coding, it is based on mathematics. It, it is based on science, actually. And uh, nothing worried about that because already there are so many apps. There are so many uh, agencies, those who are eagerly uh, waiting to deliver their uh, lecture on uh, Madam at the, in the, uh, at uh, 10 a.m. They are calling, Madam, have you a child? Have you child? I know. Yes, I have a child. I have a son. Okay. Do, do, so, do you like to train your child for uh, for coding? I know what kind kind of coding? That it is based on mathematics. And you are from? I am from Whitehead Junior. I am okay. Then what to do? No, no. We, we will arrange the free coding class. I am okay. Then after that, then I am how how many how many days? Just for one month. And then after that. No, after that, you have to pay for that. And then how much I have to pay? Then I have to, you have to pay uh, to 20 or 40,000. 40, Is it possible for uh, every family to spend 30 to 40,000 for their children for uh, learning coding? It is not possible. Actually, mathematics background is necessary. But here, NEP mentioned that in every uh, school, they will arrange. Already in the Delhi Public School, actually my son is uh, 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 from uh, Delhi Public School and that's why I know that, that they already have arranged flip learning. And it is paid by the institution. And it is really very much interesting because the students are eagerly waiting to learn uh, what will be, ha what, what, what is happening with uh, uh, the dinosaur what is happening with my body the chapter is my body what is happening with the chapter my family and they're eagerly waiting to learn through this kind of flip learn method and the maybe the uh, the Delhi public school is a uh, they can arrange but it is not possible for the uh, uh, rural schools but NEP suggests 
NEP suggest that every school has to arrange this kind of le learning app and this kind of module for every students, for every students. And uh, I don't know how they will implement it. And for this kind of infra, uh, uh, arrangement, there should be um, infrastructure and obviously uh, financial part. And I think government will arrange um, financial um, matter for that part for that kind of schools. We think so. Already, it is a recommended, and uh, I don't know uh, for implementation part how they will. Uh, uh, they will uh, uh, implement all the uh, training methods or all the uh, things in urgent basis. I don't know. But we have to wait for that. Already it is recommended. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Any other questions, anybody? Any other questions? No ma'am. Yes, please. Ma'am, I'm Madhurima Mukherjee. Uh, I do have a question to ma'am that uh, NEP 2020 emphasizes upon FDP courses for teachers for rigorous and continuous developing for teaching skill. And uh, but what type of FDP programs one should join in higher education? Uh, so university, it's in so university. Already, uh, various universities, several universities are arranging these kinds of FDP program, faculty development program. But uh, and yes, one, if, uh, any student, if any teacher wants to join, they can. Why not? Yes, ma'am. But those programs, basically, we can see that those programs are mostly on research and uh, research on uh, research methodology based. No, 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 Madhurima. No, 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 not like that. Just uh, two months ago, Jadupur University has arranged this kind of FDP. No, not based on research methodology, based on various kinds of uh, uh, areas, that is uh, education technology, at uh, CBCS and uh, teaching uh, method, then uh, 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 I, I can't remember just now, uh, but not based on research methodology. No, no, never. Dachi University has al al already arranged, Divrugan University has arranged various kinds of FDP, FDP based program on various kinds of uh, area. Not okay, that uh, all are based on research methodology. Not like problem. that. Not like that. Our okay. university. What my answer? Arranged. Our university has also has arranged in the last month. Not based on. Uh, the I have research <laughs> Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Got my answer. Thank you. Sudeshna, you have a question. Sudeshna Mukherjee, you have a question. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, here from the discussion. Question. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, then if we don't have this question, any more questions, then uh, we can wind up for today. Thank you, Jointi, so much for sparing your valuable time for our webinar and giving such a wonderful and a detailed lecture and uh, helping the participants with all sorts of queries they had and thank you so much Jointi. uh hope to see you again you've been okay. you've been to our college number of times and hope to bring we hope to invite you again and hear from you yeah after the pandemic in our college okay thank you so much for thank, you, ma okay. thank you ma'am thank you ma'am We'll then close for today. I, 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 I have an announcement, Mondi. Okay, okay. okay. To, to all the participants, especially to the paper presenters, that uh, tonight we will upload it, all the list, all the information related to presentation in WhatsApp group. So please follow that group. Every details will be provided there. So uh, thank you and thank you all. Mondi, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joyta. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.